Now we're going to review the hyoid bone, the thyroid cartilage, and the cricoid cartilage and discuss the different features that you're, going to, that you're going to find in the midline of the parasagittal head. First, let's identify where the hyoid bone is. The hyoid bone is right here. It's found at the level of C3. Remember that it has a lesser and greater horns, which are paired. And this is where you're going to find it basically in the lower region of the laryngeal pharynx, which describes this area here. A little bit further down, you're going to find the thyroid cartilage at the level of C4-5. Remember that the thyroid cartilage has its um, large anterior lamina that, that come together in the midline and create your uh, anterior protuberance, or what is commonly referred to as the Adam's apple. Remember, too, that the thyroid cartilage is void in the back, or it's open in the back, and it has its uh, greater and lesser horns that are found um, a little bit posteriorly. Then if we go down just a little bit more, we see at the level of C6, the cricoid cartilage. And remember, the cricoid cartilage goes actually all the way around and creates a ring. And the cricoid cartilage ends up being much thicker in the back. So we see that the, the cricoid cartilage is at, at the level of C6. And this is at level C6 right here. But this is also some of the cricoid cartilage that you see in the back. If we move up just a little bit, we can see behind the level of the thyroid cartilage, which is right here, we see the uh, vocal cords. This is uh, housed within the, uh, the thyroid cartilage. And then anterior to the thyroid cartilage at the level of C4 or 5, what you're going to find is the thyroid gland. And the thyroid gland ends up having uh, two lobes and then um, connected by an isthmus. And the two lobes end up taking either side of the, the thyroid cartilage, and the isthmus is what crosses the second, third, and fourth tracheal rings a little bit lower. Moving further up, we see our epiglottis. Our epiglottis is responsible for uh, shutting off the, the uh, trachea when we uh, ingest any kind of uh, food and create a bolus for which is to pass down through the esophagus. So what we have here is the epiglottis. And as I just told you, that it's going to be closing off the opening to the trachea. Well, the trachea doesn't actually start until the level of C6. It doesn't start until the level of C6 down here. So we have our, uh, like I said, we have our vocal cords, the area of our thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage. And then the trachea begins immediately inferior to the cricoid cartilage. Further up, if I re reveal to you the concha, <clears throat> what we see here are the inferior and the middle concha. The inferior concha is its own bone, whereas the middle concha and the superior concha, which you don't see here, are part of the ethmoid bone. Beneath each concha, you're going to find a meatus. And the between, uh, below the middle concha, you're going to have the middle meatus. And the middle meatus is responsible for draining the frontal and the maxillary sinuses. Whereas the superior meatus, which you can't see here, is responsible for draining the ethmoidal and sphenoidal sinuses. Now the sinuses themselves are found, two of them right here. This one being the frontal sinus, this one being the sphenoidal sinus. The ethmoid sinus is a little bit deeper and higher in this area, and then the maxillary sinus we found within the maxilla, uh, maxillary bone, um, or in the maxilla, which would be in this area. You will see it better if you had a coronal section. Also worth noting is the dura mater, which is responsible for covering the brain. Right here we have the hard palate and the soft palate. The hard palate, to anterior two-thirds, is made up of the palatine process of maxilla. Posterior third, made up of the palatine bone. We have three different tonsils that we talk about in this class uh, that you need to know. The pharyngeal tonsils, the palatine tonsils, and the lingual tonsils. The pharyngeal uh, tonsils are paired tonsils which are found near the uh, pharyngeal tubercle on either side, which would be embedded in tissue up here. Then what we have is our palatine tonsils, which are going to be found embedded in tissue on either side of the, where the hard and soft palates meet. You're right in here. 
and then the lingual tonsils are going to be embedded in the, in the bulk of the tongue on either side, right in around here. So actually, if, if we were to turn the tongue, it would be back here, and then on the other side, right here. Okay. Lastly, some more generic terms that you just need to know about. The different um, areas of the pharynx. So as I mentioned to you before, down here in this area we have the laryngeal pharynx. Then we have in the area of the mouth the oral pharynx. And then the most superior uh, aspect would be the nasal pharynx. And all that's describing is like fossa of the skull. We're just describing the areas of the different pharynx. Okay? The pharynx is all this area. But when you subdivide it, you talk about your nasopharynx, your oropharynx, and your uh, laryngeal pharynx. Finally, something worth noting here would be this sheet of muscle, which is usually pinned back against the vertebral column here. And this sheet of muscle is actually what makes up the constrictor muscles. And we'll, we'll learn more about those in a, another review lecture.